Good morning and welcome to this Trinity Sunday 2021. This is St. Thomas Anglican Church in Stittsville, Ontario. My name is Lee Lambert. Welcome. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and moral one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Our call it for today. Father, we praise you. Through your word and Holy Spirit, you created all things. You revealed your salvation in all the world by sending to us Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory, that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll now have our readings. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings, and with two they covered their faces, with two they covered with their feet, and with the other two they flew. One called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I'm lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the letter of Paul to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For if you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from, or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, 
that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him might, may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When we um, are looking at these, these wonderful Trinity Sunday uh, readings, we realize we've, we've actually reached the, uh, the end of the first half of our Christian year. Um, it begins in, in First Advent, and then it comes all the way around into the springtime uh, right now with Trinity Sunday. And from Trinity Sunday onward until the, the uh, reign of Christ the King right before First Advent uh, comes again, uh, this is the time when we begin to reflect upon what the ministry of Christ meant. Because from First Advent until now is, is, an, is an overall arching narrative. It finishes at Pentecost, actually, and then with Trinity Sunday, we begin to reflect on exactly what that, the, the death, the resurrection, the entire ministry of Christ uh, means to us and what the import is for all of us in our daily lives and in our eternal life uh, as well. And, and here we have Nicodemus coming in darkness. I mean, the, the darkness is, is, uh, is a reflective of two things. One, that he doesn't want to be seen coming to Christ to speak to him, that there, there, there may be some ramifications for him for asking uh, certain questions, something unfortunately which many people online can relate to today, uh, do or say the wrong thing and bad things might happen. Nicodemus comes in darkness uh, under the cover of night, as it were, to speak to Christ so that he doesn't have these ramifications from others who might question why he's doing that. And secondly, it's also reflective of the fact that Nicodemus is in the dark, literally, um, in, a, in a, sorry, in a metaphoric way. Um, he, he, he doesn't see. Uh, he's looking for Christ, but uh, he doesn't quite see clearly yet, and he asks these questions. And Jesus will say three times, very truly I tell you, and, and that's a flag for us when we are reading this, that these are, are, are the, um, the foundational true statements that are being made, you know. Um, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. That's a very important statement that Christ makes there. Being born of water and the Spirit shows that not only do you need to follow um, the rites as have been laid out here on earth and to do the earthly duties that you need to fulfill, uh, but you also have to be born of the Spirit. And that means you have to allow a fundamental change to take place by the Holy Spirit coming into your life and not pushing your spirit out, but guiding you as that advocate and, and helping to shape you into a more Christ-like being. That's, that's the essential thing. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to come and to live with you and to advise you and to, to fill you um, so that you can truly do God's, God's will here on earth. Now, an important thing on Trinity Sunday that, we, of course, I, I, I can't go any further without speaking about is the, the concept itself of the Trinity, of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, it's a stumbling block for, for other, uh, uh, some other faith traditions because uh, it looks like, and it can sound like, um, in a cursory glance, that that's three different gods, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It isn't. It's, it's three reflections of the one God. And the, the best way to describe this, I think, is, is by the, um, the easily accessible concept of water. In, in its natural state here on Earth, um, water is in three separate forms. You have, you have it in steam, um, in, in hot springs. Uh, you'll have water in a steam form. Obviously, if you go to the North or South Poles, um, or in your refrigerator, your uh, freezer, I should say, you'll have ice. Um, and you also have it in liquid form, which is its most abundant and easily found form. So you have ice, you have steam, and you have water. These are three separate things. We call them three separate things, but the essential element itself of water, H2O, remains exactly the same in all three. So there's three different states, but the matter doesn't change. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit could be said in a very rough way to be three separate states of exactly the same thing, and that's what we have one God, there's, no, there's not three, but there, we have the three expressions that we have through scripture and through contemplation um, arrived at around the fourth century 
AD, this very clearly defined Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In a very rough way, you could say God, God the Creator above us, um, God the Son uh, with us who walks beside us, and, and God the Holy Spirit that fills us. So the Holy Spirit in, uh, the Son around, and the Father above. But I don't want you to confine uh, how you see that to exactly what I just said or the concept of steam and ice and water. Don't even try to confine it. That's just the way that we can uh, perceive. Uh, but we have to know that we, we, God is never fully known uh, by us, that all of these ways of conceptualizing God, uh, all of them fall short. Um, it's, it's just important to realize that, that none of these fully encompasses God. God can never be put into a box or a ring um, or an easily defined category. Uh, it's important to realize, I think, always that um, God can be known but never fully known, that we have a self-revealing God who has shown these things to us and will continue to teach us and to show us things through the work of the Holy Spirit, but those are never exhausted because God is, is boundless and endless and throughout all time. Um, therefore, our learning of God continues, uh, even past the point of death. So there's never a static nature to our relationship with God. There's always growth, and there's always moving onward. Um, when, when we look at our, uh, uh, the Nicene Creed, um, and, it, and it speaks of uh, being of one substance with the Father, in the original Greek in which that was written, it was uh, homoousios, uh, the same substance, one, one substance, but three persons. Uh, and, and, and it's a wonderful thing here, like when we, we read uh, about people like Nicodemus. Nic Nicodemus is an everyman, it, it, you know, one of us. These are questions we've asked ourselves. How does it all work? What does it look like? And ask the same questions people still ask today. How can these things, how can these things be? Can, can a person who's grown old enter into the womb once again and, and Christ gently steers him away. Stop thinking of these things in human terms. Think of them in spiritual terms. What we're talking about is that the kingdom of God is a spiritual realm that transcends the world that you see around you. Of course in the world if you have been born and grow old you can't enter into the, the womb again. It's a ridiculous concept but we're not talking about that. We're talking about being reborn from above. Um, the, the words here, because once again it's translated from Greek, uh, born again or born from above, same wording in Greek, but it can be, and that's why you'll see it in different, uh, different uh, uh, biblical uh, uh, interpretation, different versions of the Bible. In some it'll say being born again, and some it'll say being born from above. It's the same wording, but it just shows you that in the translation you have to be very careful because it means both those things. It means being born again, but it also means being born from above again, not being born in a human, physical uh, sense. Um, and then he says to, to Nicodemus, who is a teacher in his own right, after he asks, how can these things be? Jesus says to him, are you a teacher of Israel, yet you don't, you don't understand these things? Now, when he says this, are you a teacher of Israel? Uh, it's, it's the singular uh, of the verb, you. So he's speaking directly to Nicodemus, you. Are you a teacher of Israel and you don't understand these things? And then he says again, very truly, I tell you, and the you is the plural. So then he, he opens it out to speaking to everybody. Very truly, I tell all of you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, and yet you do not receive our testimony. So we have this admonition to receive these words, the, 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 um, the revelation in Jesus Christ. You have to receive that testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? So the, the entirety of Jesus' ministry here on earth was to attempt to always steer people toward, because that's the thing that Christ spoke about all the time, was the kingdom of God. Every single time he speaks, he's speaking about the kingdom of God. All the parables and the miracles were an effort to, to get people to uh, you know, turn their gaze to the spiritual realm of which he was king, is king, the kingdom of God. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, which was a physical act to, to, to physically heal the people uh, of Israel, that whosoever believes in him, the Son of Man, um, 
may not perish but have eternal life. So in this, in this belief um, in, in Jesus Christ, the Son, who is part of the Godhead, so is God, um, then you are, the world is not condemned, we are saved through that knowledge. So uh, uh, this, is, um, this is a passage from John I want you to read and reread over and over again because it, it's, uh, it's like the proverbial onion. There's layers upon layers upon layers and they're never exhausted. Um, so this week and as we go forward into the weeks to come, keep reflecting upon on these words here and the ones that are to come in our scripture as we go on in our readings that, that it, it, it's, it's a, a constant process of self-revelation that God pursues with us and, and, and engages with us, the self-revelation so that we learn more and more and more and the new teachings don't erase the older ones, they just add to them. God bless you all uh, on this Trinity Sunday and uh, we will talk to you very soon. Let us pray to God the Holy Spirit saying, come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, creator, and renew the face of the earth. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, counselor, and touch our lips that we may proclaim your word. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, power from on high, make us agents of peace and ministers of wholeness. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, breath of God, Give life to the dry bones of this exiled age and make us a living people, holy and free. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, wisdom and truth, strengthen us in the risk of faith. Come, Holy Spirit, come. This week in our parish, we pray for Susan and Cal Chapman, Julie, Sean, Jason, Robbie, sorry, Robin, and Maggie Clark, Marilee Clark, Diane and Bill Clement, Don and Joan Cooper, Bev and Dick Coote, Barbara Caduce. We also pray for the sick and those in need of healing among us, for Peter, Diana, Richard, Joan, Olive, Lynn, Rod, Marilee, Hillary, Rita, and Craig.
dear friends in Christ. God is steadfast in love, and he is infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you all. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. This morning, we'll use Eucharistic prayer number one, found on page 193. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened the path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants, Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation, and therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night that he freely gave himself over to death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
My dear friends, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now. Many are made one. We receive you, Jesus Christ. We welcome your presence with us and together proclaim your love with our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our strength. With the saints, we worship you. With the angels, we adore you. With your whole church, we proclaim your reign. Come to us, though many, and make us one in you. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our form for the breaking of the bread is number eight. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Almighty and eternal God, may we who have received this Eucharist worship you in all that we do and proclaim the glory of your majesty. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. As you go forth into the world today, may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may they see Christ's face in you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve our risen Lord, Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 God bless you, and please have a safe week. Good morning. Welcome to St. Thomas. Glad to have you with us today. I have a few announcements. Um, the first one is that uh, the announcements are recorded on the telephone every Thursday, and uh, if you uh, want to listen to them, as soon as you hear Nicole's voice, just press four and uh, it'll put you right to the announcements and you can hear them uh, all on uh, the telephone. The office hours uh, for the COVID are the afternoons now and Nicole is in on Tuesday from one to four and then the phones are answered the other days. And uh, so if uh, you need anything, please uh, don't hesitate to get in charge in touch of one of the wardens or to leave a message on the telephone. Uh, the cemetery group is meeting and they're going to do a cleanup day and if you have some time on uh, Saturday, June the 5th, uh, I'm sure at 10 o'clock they would be happy to have your help and uh, our uh, cemetery is on Huntley uh, Road just down the street from the church at the corner and uh, if you could uh, give a hand on uh, Saturday, June the 5th at 10 o'clock. They would appreciate that. 
Our rain barrels are still for sale and if you have any friends or if you need one yourself, that'll be going on till June the 12th. And uh, we have a lot of uh, prompts to get you uh, onto that site by in the rain barrel uh, formation. So if you need help with that though, please call the church office and Nicole will give you a hand. Uh, fun script, the uh, due date is June the 6th, that's a Sunday. And uh, let Jody or Nicole know and uh, they'll be uh, able to order your gift cards and have them here in a couple of days. The Prayer and Pint group have uh, started a courier service and uh, it's for people that um, have done shopping or need a prescription picked up and uh, they'll be happy to go and get it for you. You might have an order in and then you have no way of getting it to your home. So if you uh, need that, call the church office or give uh, Pat McNally a call and they'll set that up and be more than happy to do that for you. Um, the uh, lawn mowing is in need. We, re we have a list going, but please, if you could just help, even if just one time, that would be appreciated. It takes a lot to keep our grounds uh, nice and uh, we have the equipment. We also need help with the gardens. And uh, even if you're passing by and you see some grass uh, growing as weeds, maybe you could just pull that out of the gardens and help keep the uh, gardens nice and fresh because our uh, grounds look so lovely and it'll be nice to uh, continue with that over the summer. And um, I guess that's all for now and uh, please stay safe, get those COVID vaccines and uh, until next time we'll talk to you soon.